So this comes with Windows 10 Home. What the luck? Come on. Let's get rid of that Windows Home. Let's get some Windows Pro. Copy and paste my code from the description. You can also get Office 2019. Just paste my code. Woof. It's Windows Pro time. Righto, tell you there, champs. Now let's have a look at one of the most impressive all-in-ones I've ever reviewed, the Dell Optiplex 7760 all-in-one. Why is it the most impressive? Have a look at this. Wolf, yes. <laughs> you can articulate the screen. You can push it right down there. It's not really for consumers. It's for Soho, like businesses, like home businesses, somewhere where you need just a computer for productivity or point of sale and stuff like that. This is what you get. And you can tell it's not made for consumer because you can get Intel V Pro. It is really made for sort of enterprise work, office sort of stuff. Now, if you're a consumer, go to the Inspiron range because the Inspiron range, you can get a graphics card. Now, as I said, this is the 7760. There is a new 7470 and 7770, which is the new one with the ninth generation CPUs. If you're going to get one, get one of those unless you pick up a deal on one of these because really it's just a bump in the CPU. Nice display on it. This 27-inch display, is, as I showed you, it articulates its touch. It's really weird because it's matte and touch. You have an option of 4K, Full HD, Full HD Touch, and both Full HDs are matte. It is sort of strange to see a matte touch, but yeah, it works pretty well. The screen is good for what it's designed for, for office use and stuff like that. If you're an artist, you're not going to be using this sort of stuff, but, but in the office environment, this screen's perfectly fine. It's not the brightest thing around, and the viewing angles, because of that matte coating on it, it doesn't have the absolute best viewing angles, but for home, office, porn and sale, it's perfectly fine. You can imagine using it in a cafe, yeah, pushing it down like that. Have your porn and sale software on there, Boop, 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 using it as a touchscreen, perfect. And it does have upgradability. You can upgrade it yourself. You can upgrade the RAM, two RAM slots, and one M.2. It does have two M.2 ones for the Wi-Fi. Of course, it has Wi-Fi and it has all these ports. I'll put a list of all the ports up there because there's a load of them. The only one I'm really missing here is Thunderbolt 3. And you cannot get a graphics card in this. So I say, if you're a consumer and you want to game a bit or something like that, get the Inspiron all-in-one. But for Office, probably a good thing it doesn't have graphics because you don't want your workers with a computer that you can game on. That's a bad idea. But yeah, it has HDMI in, out, has audio out, audio in. It has everything there. Just Thunderbolt 3, it's missing. It even has USB-C on the side, as you can see there. Very quiet. Thermals are in check here. The one I have here is limited to 65 watts. So no matter if you undervolt it, it's not going to go any faster. It's well over base clock. It's like nearly gigahertz over base. You can hardly hear it under load. And if you undervolt it, you know, you barely hear the fans at all. And temperatures, yeah. Even when it's not undervolted, they're only in the 70s. It'll fit into your home office or a stylish workplace. It does look quite good. And the bezel small unlike the iMac with those big thick bezels now it is expensive like this model here was like 2600 Australian something like that 1800 2000 US or whatever but with this you get the three-year on-site warranty so if you're in the workplace this is perfect or a home office don't have to mess about they'll come and fix it on site if there's any issues you can upgrade to 32 gigs ram they are desktop processors in here but again limited to that 65 watts and that's about it right a nice stylish office computer does what you want it to your productivity stuff again if you're a consumer go to the Inspiron, get it one with a graphics card or something like that but this would be an awesome computer in your workplace so yeah let's have a closer look at it catch you in the next one tally ho okay on idle you cannot hear it well, slight bit of fan noise. Can you hear that? Let's pump it up. Let's prime it. And this is going 100% CPU now. You can see there, 100% CPU usage. Can you hear the difference? Like nothing. You can't even hear it under load. So it's amazing. And also that clock does not drop below base. The temperatures are well controlled, doesn't even get into the 80s or just slightly into the 80s under full load after a long time. So this is really good. Okay, so it's been under load for a while now. That's as hot as it gets. 70s. Okay, can you hear the fan? You can just hear it now. And that's as loud as it gets under full load. And look at the clock, still 3.7. Well above base, a 1,000 nearly over base. And yeah, you can undervolt it. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, this is something you're never going to do. Minus 150 millivolt. I've cranked it up to 120 watts. Let's see what happens. Um, 
Let's torture test this. Torture test. Disable AVX. Small FFTs. Boom. Let's see what happens. 3.8. Doesn't see so it's not going to go over that sort of speed there, even if you undervolt it. But the temperatures are well down now. Okay. Well down. Temperature 62. Wow. That's a big 10 degree drop there. Just doing that undervolt as you'd expect. But now it's whisper quiet and we're getting a 3.8. So no matter what you do, you're not going to get more than that 3.8. But no, no noise, right? No noise, low temperatures. So yeah, you can undervolt it, but you know it's an office thing.